Hi there, Christian Henson from Spitfire Audio here. Really excited to share with you my findings with working with Hansamer Strings in combination with other string libraries recorded in the hall at Air Studios. And I can report it's good, it's really, really good. What I thought I'd do is use both ends of the scale, Hansamer Strings combined with our Chamber Strings library, which has been one of my favourite go-to libraries over the last few years. What I love about the Chambers is it's got a kind of a detail, a focus, you can hear the individual players and what I love about Hans Zimmer's strings is the sheer kind of talk you get in your track. So I'll just run you through track by track to show you how I've kind of built this up but basically the, the brief to myself was aperture to start with this kind of close defined sound and for it to slowly gradually build out into this epic track and quite unusually for me uh, I've used mainly legato transitions for the long notes in both the chamber strings and the hand zimmers I don't use legatos that often and whenever I do I'm always like you really should use these more often because where long string articulations are concerned uh, the use of legatos I think gives you the greatest reality not only because of the actual legato transitions but because of the way that you write when you write monophonically you think of each voice as a separate voice which is exactly what it should be so you write with a greater degree of counterpoint all of these things that really go into traditional sounding string writing. Anyway, I'll stop waffling. I started with my favourite, uh, the flautando, which isn't actually a legato transition. Then I've got my... Actually, I'll tell you what, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep these up. Now, the mic positions, I think, on this kind of arrangement, particularly with Hans Zimmer strings, are absolutely crucial. So if I stick that down there, hopefully you'll be able to see how I've used the different mic positions. So next up is a cello legato. And that's slowly, I've automated quite a lot of this, so, so that slowly builds in, not only with the uh, expression and dynamic, but also it just uh, channel volume. And then we've got our basses. Very nice. And then we have a viola coming in, and what I've used on this is the consort. I tend to use consort more in samples than I do actually with live musicians. There's something about certain build-ups in the kind of mid-range when you start stacking just normal or normal longs that I don't like. I like the kind of wispy sound of the consort. So this is the portamento. And then just gradually what I start doing is just building up more second violins. Start getting higher and higher. And then the very last one. As then we switch to the shorts. So just a kind of ostinato there. Now what's interesting about that one is when it starts looping, I've actually put the accent on the and of the one. Now this is an interesting one. This is a kind of a counterpoint to the one here. It's kind of a phasing pattern and occasionally uh, the strings will trigger the same note. Now because there's round robins, it'll very rarely trigger the same sample, but I just wanted a different sonic quality so if ever the same note was hit it wasn't the same note if you know what I mean so I used my track and stack technique which I've talked about at length in a vlog linked below to basically make sure that the sound quality is is different for these phasing sections particularly when they're playing the same note so all I did is I transposed minus three and tuned up three now this is also a convenient way of making the strings if you're not a purist even tighter because basically what you're doing is 
is you're accessing samples lower in the register, and in order for them to play in the same key, you're tuning them up. So as you tune them up, they get shorter. The room also does get shorter as well, so you don't want to be too extreme, but just let's have a listen to... Effective. Right, so moving on to the hands in the strings, what you'll see is these gradually fade in to kind of open that aperture. So if we move in here, and I've fancily coloured the kind of cousins so you know which parts are the same. And what I've basically done here, let's just move to this section here, is um, I've actually split it into two sections, left and right. <laughs> those kind of accents are really kind of cutting in. And then I've done the same with uh, the second part. And then I've switched to the violins, uh, not using much of the close, actually any of the close here for the second bit. And I've kept those off to the kind of where they would be to the left slightly and then now with this kind of stuff you can address the tightness but I've kind of kept it midway because what I'm using the chamber strings for is the really kind of bitey tight and what I'm using the Hans Zimmer strings for is that sense of width again as I described in my other Hans Zimmer video you know where shorts concerned if you want that sense of scale you have to imagine a stadium clapping it's not going to be like it's going to be like, ha. So to get that sense of scale, I'm really taking advantage of the slightly looser nature of Hans Zimmer strings in concert, if you will. And that's what I've been really excited about doing with these two libraries. And then basically what I've done is I've, I've duplicated the tracks above, again, color-coded them with loads of the Hans Zimmer legatos, which are excellent. And surprisingly, what I've done is dialed in a lot of the close mic. What I found was that once you really started building up the tracks, it became very, very washy. And in fact, counterintuitively, in order to get that real sense of scale, what you need is also the focus of Jeff's amazing selection of close mics. So let's just have a quick listen to these amazing legatos. So you can hear that actually it's not a massive spread, it's actually quite a focus sound uh, using the hands of the strings with quite a lot of the close kind of favouring the mix to the tree. So we have a defined sound. The problem with you building up these tracks is when your bass and your kind of cellos are swimming about, it becomes just a, a lake of sound as opposed to music. So. It's a kind of marauding sound, but quite focused, uh, which I build up with expression and dynamic control. And then we switch to the violas and the, the violins. We've got a much more kind of a wider sound there. So as we're going up in the register, we get wetter and wetter. So let's have a listen to these next two. It's almost a Jerry Goldsmith sound to it. I absolutely love it. And then the very highest. Oh. Love it. Almost sounds like kind of really passionate uh, sopranos there. An interesting part is these drone sections, which is a little bit more of a hybrid sound. So what I used was the cello's Colegno Tratto, which I think is going to become a modern classic, which is them playing actually long notes with the back of the bow. So not hitting, but actually bowing. Usually doesn't make much of a noise at all, but with these numbers of players, it, it produces a legitimate tone. So... Which is great. And then what I did is my track and stack technique. So I basically, it's the same part as you can see there, but I transposed it down four and then tuned it up four 
And then what I also did was add a AU Pitch, my favorite uh, Logic plugin, but it's just basically a, a pitching plugin. And then I automated the pitch going up and down. So the effect is this kind of hybrid sound. It's not, I'm not intending for it to sound real. And then what I've done is I've double tracked that with a effect, which is absolutely brilliant, called Tremolo CS Pont Waves. But I've got that kind of swelling up and down. And last of all is my underbase, which is my trusty EXS24 Logic's in-house sampler with a GUI that hasn't changed for 15 years. But it, it's the world's best sine wave, so I stick that under the bases to give it a real sense of, of gravitas. Again, what I found useful was to actually get rid of some of the very bottom end here of the bases because it was kind of swimming in the room and just let the EXS give you a kind of laser focus on those subharmonics. One of the great joys of having spent the last 10 years sampling stuff in the hall is you get this fantastic set of different modules if you kind of imagine a modular synth but with an orchestra and you can just slot in these different kind of lenses with different aperture settings. And I hope this demo really demonstrates that concept with two strings libraries that sit on opposite ends of the scale. Chamber strings, which is about 14 players, I think, and Hans Zimmer strings, which is 344 and probably considerably more in this arrangement. So let's have a listen.
what I've used is differing degrees of reverb to gel the whole thing together from my Brucasti. What I love about the Brucasti, it's like a gravy, but it's not a heavy one. So it doesn't seem to take up the track with kind of mud, as a friend of mine put it yesterday. It gives it just this great sense of space. Now, on a dense track like this, I would really enjoy hearing what an audio engineer would do with it in the mix. And I'll try and see if I can get Jake Jackson to do a mix of this at some stage in the near future. This will probably end up on my vlog linked below. And as I say, you know, just this combination of using different size bands in the hall, I think is a really effective way of adjusting your aperture. So it starts kind of quite personal, a little bit intense, and it just becomes this slightly more gothic widescreen sound towards the end. Thanks as always for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, I really recommend you do that. Lots of really exciting stuff coming up. And if you want to be notified when we put up a new video, hit the little bell button. If you like what we do, hit like, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.